what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. good. Today guys, we're back again with a new video guys. I'm just here with you guys. My name is Devin and welcome to the first video. So they're going to be reacting to response to a Muslim questioning the nature of Christ. Nabel Goreshio. This is going to be our first time checking this out. Also, let's check it out with you guys. You know how it is. Check us right in the reaction. Let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So my uh, uh, so being a Muslim, as you can uh, already mentioned, uh, my main problem is uh, with the Christian doctrine of Godhood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So my, my uh, there's a couple of questions that are related. Uh, first of all, I find uh, this concept uh, logically fallacious. Uh, like there are many aspects to its logical fallacy, as in maybe uh, uh, one of them could be that how can God be finite and then infinite at the same time? Like this is like it's like saying that they could exist a square circle. It's it's a logical fallacy. Okay? So uh, uh, when we say that Jesus was God or Son of God, we are actually saying that God existed in finitude during the life of Jesus, and He also is infinite at the same time. This is uh, logically fallacious. Now, b because you are uh, like you're coming from a historical standpoint. Did you want me to respond to that, or are you? Uh, uh, it's a related, um, uh, uh, like the same question. Continuing. So, because you're coming at it from a historical standpoint, um, another thing that adds, like the historical evidence that adds, uh, like that supports this argument, is that the concept of Trinity, the word Trinity itself, it doesn't appear as a theological term till near the end of the second century after Jesus. So uh, it was first used by, as trias by Theophilus, the bishop of Antioch in AD 180. So uh, we can, uh, and like adding up to that, when you refer to Mark chapter 14, verse 62, which is uh, what you say is the proof that Jesus claimed to be God, um, are you really applying the same criteria of objectivity that you were applying previously to the Quran? when uh, interpreting this as meaning that Jesus is claiming himself to be God? Because if you like, look at it completely objectively, uh, looking at the entire text, like, there is nothing in the entire text that's, that's saying that Jesus is claiming to be God. And in fact, the verse that you yourself quote is actually saying son of man. So, I mean, I, I, think, I think you get to, um, yeah. Don't go anywhere. What's your name? Uh, Munzer. Munzer, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Pakistan. Pakistan. Um, I had the exact same questions when I was uh, when I when I practiced Islam. What I want to point out is that first and foremost, what we have to see is what Jesus claimed for Himself. Now, the secondary stuff that follows, the theological unfolding or unpacking of what He said, we can spend years and years debating what it means. But what did He say about Himself? That's the first thing we want to look at. So again, that's a historical perspective. Theologians argue all day long, back and forth, back and forth. You know, theologians argue all the time, and I just sit back and watch and smile because you can't really prove it one way or another. But when it comes to historical events, we can show with relative degrees of certainty, if the evidence is good, if the records are good, what the most likely conclusion is. So first, and um, let me give you an answer before, if you feel like interjecting, we can talk afterwards. First, I want to point out you are absolutely right. The term Trinity is not used till the end of the second century. What is the doctrine of God called in the Quran? In Islam, what is the doctrine of God called? Uh, Tawheed. Tawheed. Is that in the Quran? Uh, I mean, no, the word Tawheed. The word Tawheed the, is a derived word from Ahad. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Good. So you understand the word Tawheed is not itself in the Quran. In the same way, the word Trinity is not itself in the Bible. This doesn't pose a problem. The Shahada is not found in the Quran. You have the components of the Shahada in the Quran, but oh, you do not, hold on, you do not have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in that way found in the Quran. The component, hold on, the components are found in the Quran. With the Trinity, the components are found in the Bible. So, uh, the word Tawheed does appear in the Hadith. 
Oh, that's great, is, but it's not in the Quran. The narrations of the Prophet. And the, and the Hadith is much later. So we're looking at the, you asked for the Bible, and we have within the early canonical tradition, people calling a, a God a trinity in the early canonical tradition. In fact, much closer to Jesus' time than the Hadith were to Muhammad's time. So it, whichever way you stack it, when you're consistent, you end up with a stronger case for the Trinity, for Jesus' deity. Now I want to continue on to your next part of your question, which is, is Jesus finite or infinite? The argument is that Jesus is, you know, actually I'm going to pose it in a slightly different way. Can Allah come onto this world if he wants? Can he be in this world if he wants? Uh, I, I wouldn't think so. You wouldn't because, think so. So, you, so Allah's omnipotence is limited. He can't come onto this world. It's it's like basically you, Allah Taala cannot do a logically fallacious thing. Like He cannot create a square circle, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's that's something logically. But fallacious. how do we so know there are that's what this is? That Allah, Allah but, how, cannot... but how do we know that's what this is? Because, for example, in Surah Al Imran, when Allah is talking to Moses, it says in Surah Al Imran, I think it's Surah Al Imran. It might be Surah 18. But double check. Um, that Allah, as he spoke to Moses, Allah was in the bush. Allah was in the bush. So if you want to say that meant something else, well, you're going to have to argue with the Quran on that one. It seems to be pretty clear that Allah can emanate his voice from a physical place. He can be in a physical place in a sense. In the same way, we don't believe, I don't believe that God coming to this earth limits his omnipotence. It's not a limitation of his omnipotence. Jesus has taken on flesh. God the Father is still everywhere. God, Jesus, exactly. the Son, is here on this earth. It's a limitation in that sense, but it's not a limitation of his nature. He is both the divine and human nature. That's the argument. Now, I want to uh, talk about briefly, and then we're going to have to go to the next question, but let's talk afterwards for sure. You asked about the Son of Man. You said he's not calling himself the Son of God. He's calling himself the Son of Man. I'm emphasizing to you, my friend, when this hit me, again, while I was practicing Islam, when this hit me, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. The claim Son of God, according to Jews at that time, was not anything divine. Adam was called the Son of God. Solomon was called the Son of God. In the Psalms it says, you are gods. It's not a divine claim to call someone a Son of God. But when someone refers to that Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, who's going to receive glory, authority, and sovereign power, and people of every nation and language are going to worship Him with the worship due only to God, that Son of Man is more than just a human. He hmm. is divine. He's going to be worshipped by all people of all time. So when Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, he's not, it's not the Son of God title. And lots of Christians get this wrong, so I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at you. Lots of Christians say, oh, Son of Man means he's human, and Son of God means he's God. No, it's the other way around. In the Jewish context, Son of God was a normal human title. Son of Man, from Daniel 7, that was something divine. Go back and read Daniel chapter 7. See that this man is worshipped by all people from all eternity. This man one who looks like a human anyway, is worshipped by all people alongside of God the Father. That's the one Jesus is claiming to be. Definitely understand that point that I'm trying to make. And so when you see that Jesus' claim is found there in Mark 14, 62, it's found in all the Gospels. And every time Jesus uses the term Son of Man, he's alluding to that. You cannot extract that from the Gospels. So please put Mark 14, 62 next to Daniel chapter 7 and see what Jesus is claiming for himself. And we'll talk afterwards for the rest. Lord bless you, my friend. We'll take one last question. This was amazing. Uh, the clarification itself was was there. There's just some the points. Uh, this half one has been a debate at the time. Is Jesus claiming to be God? Is God cannot come in the human form? So that's how I always say the Trinity. Said. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they all work together as one. I still believe in Jesus Christ, I still believe He is the Son of God who came to die for us, for our sins. Um, there's a reason why it's been written in the Bible. Um, if it was not supposed to be there, the Bible would not be valid. It will not be there. If it was not supposed to be there, it will not be there. After Jesus' death, it would have been taken out. The reason why I said so is because God we don't want to make the whole world who is serving him look foolish. Before man start knowing about the scripture more, God would have taken that out. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, being dead now, it's for a reason. 
and a lot of Muslims argue with that, a lot of Christians we always want to debate like Jesus is the Son of God, Muslims say Jesus is not the Son of God. The debate keeps on going for centuries, for years to come. He, the guy who said it, and that is basically true. So, um, for me, how I say it, if you believe Jesus is not the Son of God, you keep it to yourself, Jesus is not the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, I keep it to myself, Jesus is the Son of God. It's beautiful to have the Holy Spirit in you, uh, to believe Jesus is the Son of God, and to be a Christian. And I strongly into my faith, and I'm not going to deny that, and I'm fully going to accept it as it is. And I know a lot of people are going to come for me, but basically, that's how I feel, that's who I am, and I can't deny that. What do you think? I love the fact that he gave him a straightforward answer. Yeah. Because there's a Muslim video I checked out, and the um, Christian was asking a question, but uh, the man ministering didn't give him a straightforward answer. I just started asking him different things about um, commandment, if Jesus, is, if Jesus is God and stuff like that. I feel if you're giving a question, direct the answer back based on the question you're giving, giving to, to you, yeah. don't turn into an argument or into a challenge that argument. you start talking about different because our religion already contradicts each other so if you bring that other aspect of it, it's going to cause a lot of confusion and misunderstanding and so just answer based on what is given to you just like when the question was asked to him he just gave the direct answer like if you want to argue about that we can talk about it later that but is the question give you an answer for this and it's straightforward so you can watch this video and be like he didn't answer him or he didn't get his point there i got both of their point both the muslim guy asking and the christian guy and i really love the fact that the guy who answered the question was a muslim before so he yeah. knows about Quran, he knows about Muslim, he knows about Islam, right, yeah. and he also knows about the Bible. Bible. So it's easier for him to explain because he knows both religions. Yeah. So you see when he was talking about the Trinity, was like um, this other one, it wasn't mentioned in the Quran also, yeah. it was on TV. So he explained both of them because he knows about it. So it's easier for him to be able to explain it to that other guy because he has weakness. But, yeah. yeah. But this was nice though. I feel like when you're talking about a trinity, it's like family. Yeah. If you say family, you're saying it as one. But everyone plays their individual roles. Mm. The father is the head, the mother, yeah, she's the neck, and the children are down there. So you can't just make it look as if like it's going to confuse if you're looking at it like Jesus God, like how is it possible? Yeah. But each of them plays their own role. Jesus sits at the right hand side of God. Like they all have the role. They have the roles they're doing. And I feel if you want to understand it better, just be open minded. Don't go into it to look for confusion, to look for contradiction. No argument. Read to understand. Read to learn. Read to feel. Guys, that statement he made right there was asking the guy, um, can God come in human form? Because there's nothing that is impossible with God. That is the thing you have to know. Nothing is impossible. People feel like it's, God is too superior to come in human form. I accept that. God is too big. Way, way big to be. To right. dine with human. That's how we say it. But God sending his son, Jesus Christ. His only begotten son was because he loved this world and he don't want this world to perish. Enough. If he choose to come in human form, he can do it. So um, we arguing about is Jesus, Jesus is not God. Don't see it that way. He is the son of God. He, he had been there before Abraham. He had been there in the during the time the world was for being Abraham, formed. Abraham, Jesus was. He has been there. And people don't want to accept the fact, and oh, that's fine. You don't force that's people to believe. To believe. Yeah. So, believing is something willing from your heart. So, it's a right And I, I'm glad I checked this video out and we got some clarification. So, if you, I will drop the link in my description. You can go watch the video again. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people are going to come for me on the comment section. So, if you want to come for me, you can come for me. It's. Well, what I have in my heart, I'm going to say it out. And um, I don't do things for views. I don't do things for recognition for people. I do things because this is how I am. This is what I want to see. And if people don't really like it, it's fine by me. Uh, as long as I'm saying the truth, uh, that's fine by me.
You know how I do it, guys. Give me sure you like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. I just want a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers, pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales.